Welcome back to the Jurisprudence channel, the home for summarized case laws, legal procedures and definitions. If you're new to this channel and you love the law, please subscribe to our channel. We will be very happy to have you in our circle. But, if you're not ready to subscribe you can at least leave us a like. This video is the continuation of the Law of Delict Part 1 and 2. It serves to explain the first element of a delict being the conduct. To recap, a delict is the act of a person which in a wrongful and culpable manner causes harm to another. For a conduct to constitute a delict, it must carry five elements. Namely, an act or conduct, wrongfulness, fault or culpability, harm being a loss or damages, and causation. For the purposes of the law of delict, conduct may be defined as a voluntary human act or omission. For the purpose of delictual liability, conduct displays the following characteristics. Firstly, only an act of a human being, in contrast to that of an animal, is accepted as conduct. Where a human uses an animal as an instrument in the commission of a delict, a human act is still present. It is accepted that a juristic person, such as a company, university, public school, statutory body and so forth, may act through its organs, humans, and may thus be held delictually liable for such actions. Secondly, the human action only constitutes conduct if it is performed voluntarily. Voluntariness implies that the person in question has sufficient mental ability to control his muscular movements. Voluntariness does not mean that a person must have willed or desired his conduct. The requirement of voluntariness does not mean that a person's conduct should be rational or explicable. Conduct by an infant or someone suffering from a mental disease is usually voluntary although the doer may escape delictual liability, either because he lacks accountability or because fault is absent. Where a defendant claims that for some reason he did not act voluntarily, he is in fact raising the defense of automatism. Automatism is when the defendant argues that the conduct complained of, does not satisfy the requirement of voluntariness. There are accepted conditions that may cause a person to act involuntarily, in that they render him or her incapable of controlling his bodily movements. Among others is absolute compulsion, sleep, unconsciousness, a fainting fit, an epileptic fit, serious intoxication, a blackout, reflex movements, strong emotional pressure, mental disease and a heart attack. It is noteworthy that the defense of automatism will not succeed if the defendant intentionally created the situation in which he acts involuntarily in order to harm another. This is known as an actio libera in causa. The defendant will be held liable for his culpable conduct in creating the state of automatism, which resulted in damage to the plaintiff. The defendant may not successfully rely on the defense of automatism, where he was negligent with regard to his automatic conduct. Examples include drinking alcohol while knowing or reasonably foreseeing that one will later drive a motor vehicle, and sleeping next to a newborn baby, where it is reasonably foreseeable that the mother may roll onto the child in the course of the night while she is asleep, and cause the child to die of suffocation. The onus of proof rests on the plaintiff, where the automatism is not a consequence of mental illness. But if a defendant raises automatism resulting from mental illness as a defense, such a defendant will probably bear the onus to prove the absence of conduct. There you have it. Make sure you turn on your notification bell, to be notified whenever we post new content. If you found this video informative, please like and drop us a comment. Take care. This is the Jurisprudence channel. Forever your law buddy, until the jury do us apart.